pronation is basically when your foot turns in like that. And then that state, your foot is more of a loose, the bones are more mobile. And then when you go into supination, which is up like this, that's where your foot is more locked. Why do call that pronation? Because it's, pronation and supination is a combination of motions. And then, because it's, it's uh, pronation is eversion, uh, dorsiflexion, and I'm going out of order, so you're messing up with my. Sorry. Okay. Su for right now, just understand supination is like this when your foot lands. You land on the outside of the heel and you roll down in like that. And then that's pronation. So supination locks the foot, pronation makes it more mobile. So you're dividing the foot into the rear foot, which is the calcaneus and the talus, which is back here. And you have the midfoot, which is the rest of the tarsal bones, moving these from here, okay? And then you have the forefoot, which is this area here. So there's all the different bones. If we're going on the medial side, you have the calcaneus, the talus, then the navicular, then the first cuneiform, the first metatarsal, and then you go into the flanges. And you go on the lateral side, you have the calcaneus, you have the cuboid, and then the fifth metatarsal, and then the flanges going down. So the tarsus is basically the tarsal bones. You have seven bones in that area. Okay. The main thing that supports the weight in the foot is the calcaneus and the talus. So here you have the calcaneus, which is the largest bone in the foot, and it, it's what forms the heel. You have the heel back here. And then you have, like you mentioned before, we're talking about the uh, soleus and the gastro, attaching back here. And then on the superior surface of the calcaneus, you're going to have the talus. And then you're going to have this, what's called the cystentaculum tailae. It's part of the calcaneus that holds up the talus. And then the talus bone is basically the one that articulates with the tibia and the fibula. Okay? And then the thing with the talus is that this is the anterior portion, and you can see that the anterior portion of the joint is wider, and the posterior part is narrower. So when you're putting the foot into dorsiflexion, the wider point part of the joint, of the talus bone, is in the ankle mortis. So if you're forcing the foot up in this direction, what it can do is it can separate the tibia and the fibula. And that's what's called a high ankle sprain. So you have a ligament up here high on the ankle. And then if it's forced in that direction, you can have a high ankle sprain. Has anybody heard about that? Like you're talking about basketball or things like that? Yeah. And then when you're forward like this, like in that picture where you're in high heels, the narrower part of the talus bone is in the ankle mortis, so the ankle is going to be looser in that position. So with up on high heels, you may be more prone to maybe an ankle sprain. And the talus doesn't have any muscles that attach to it. So it's kind of caged inside with all the tendons on the other side of it. And one thing I thought was a little kind of interesting was that it has four different surfaces, and so the at some point in time, when the people didn't have anything else to do and they didn't have ways of making things, they would use it as a dice and they would roll it so it has four sides. <laughs> you know, when they're hanging around in the cave and <laughs> roll them on. Alright, so now on the lateral side we have the cuboid. So obviously that's going to be a cube shaped bone that's going to be right in here. So it articulates between the calcaneus and then the fourth and the fifth man. And then we have on the medial side here, right after the talus, you have the navicular. Okay, and then the word for navicular comes from, from the bow because it's kind of shaped, it's kind of has a curved shape like a bow. So it's sitting right here. And then 
and you have this navicular tubercle here. So that's one of the things that we'll do with palpation. You can palpate this navicular tubercle. And then as you go just distal to that, you have the cuneiforms, and there's three of them going across. So you have the medial, intermediate, and lateral, or the first, second, and third. So that's going to be these right here. Okay. So then, like this part here is going to again is going to be considered the midfoot. Then you have the rear foot, which is the calcaneus and the talus, and then you have the forefoot in this area here. And then you have the metatarsals and the phalanges. And remember, it's the same kind of thing like what we talked about in the hand. The big toe side only has two, the rest have three. So that there's a total of 14 um, phalanges in the feet. And then, of course, again, same thing as in the hand and the phalanges, you have the proximal, the middle, and the distal, unless you're talking about the thumb. In that case, you only have one. All right, now we'll talk about the arches of the foot. So you have three arches of the foot. Right? You're going to have the lateral longitudinal, which is going to be on this side here. And then the, this, the keystone of that is going to be the cuboid. So whenever you have an arch, you know, like if you're in the realm of the building arches, you have one piece that's at the very top of it. So that would be the keystone piece, and that in this case it's going to be the cuboid. And then you have the medial longitudinal arch. Who's mine? Can I talk about it? Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, if anybody has something that's extra credit and I get to it, then let me know and we'll go with it. See, I got one with a really good name. We've got the medial longitudinal arch of the butt. <laughs> And it's one of the three arches of the foot, along with the um, lateral and the transverse. So the medial one is right here. And those arches are what make it so your foot doesn't touch the ground in, in that area. Like when you're walking on the beach and, well, you all know there's a gap in your foot when you walk. <laughs> doesn't make an impression on the ground. So, that is because uh, the purpose of the arches is to support weight because you've got your entire body weight ending on your feet. And so they need to be able to support all that weight and also stretch slightly to absorb shock. So that's the reason for that. And the talus is the beginning of the um, arch, which is way back here in amongst all of these ligaments. And the keystone for that, I guess, would be the navicular, which is right here. And then that articulates with the cuneiforms, which then articulate with the metatarsals. And that, my friends, is the medial longitudinal arch of the Would be the talus as more of the concern of the apex because it's like if you look at the highest point of the arch, would be very close. So, just from the bottom of the calcaneus, yeah. the the talus, right? Talus, then navicular, then first cuneiform, then metatarsal. Okay. So, like she's saying, the, on the medial side, that's where you don't have on one side, but you don't have any kind of sand because that the medial arch is the higher arch. And you have the lateral, and then the transverse goes across this area here. So it's an arch like that. But what can happen is you can have, like if somebody has a callus on the center here, it's one of those metatarsal, and these are the metatarsal heads. They, they, you have dropped metatarsal heads. So, I should have brought some with me. I can bring maybe next time. A lot of times we'll, we'll do, to, for correcting the foot, we we'll have what's called orthotics. And one of the things that you can do in an orthotic is you have a metatarsal pad, or you've seen those things that you can get. Dr. Scholl's likes to make a lot of those stuff. Something shaped like that, and then it attaches in the shoe right here to help support that transverse arch. 